Hello everyone. Uh, today the topic is going to be how to run MapReduce on MongoDB and also how to write a standalone Java program to connect to a social media site like Twitter and then get the JSON data and insert it into a MongoDB collection. As all of you are aware, you should have the MongoDB version or MongoDB server installed. You can download it from mongodb.org or mongodb.com. Uh, take any version that you would like. The latest, as I speak, is uh, 4.04. .04. So in my system, I am going to go to the MongoDB server. And as you can see, uh, my server version is MongoDB 2 to 1. Okay. You may have a different version. I'm using it for a long time. That's why a little bit older version, but version uh, differences uh, does not matter for the illustration of the concepts that I'm describing in this particular video. So CD MongoDB 2 to 1 and then CD bin. And now you can type MongoD. This is the command for starting the MongoDB server. It's a standalone. A uh, single instance server, it's not clustered. And if everything is okay, you will be getting a message waiting on port 27017, which is the default port that is used by MongoDB unless you specify your own. Similarly, the default location that MongoDB will be using for writing the data is slash data slash db. You might have already created this particular directory and assigned the permissions to read and write for all the users. There are commands that you can use with MongoD to supply your own location and your own port. You can refer to the manual for that. Once MongoDB is started, then you can open another terminal and go to the same location. And go to the bin directory and now you can start the client. The difference between the server and the client is the letter D. If you type the letter D mongod, that is the server which is running on this particular window. And here in this blue screen, you are going to have the client. And uh, the moment you type this particular command and type enter, you should be seeing a message on this particular screen that one connection is open. So let me try that one. You can see here one connection is open which means that the client successfully connected to the server. Sometimes since the client is by default connecting to localhost 27017 port and if the local host is not being registered in your system you may need to go to slash etc slash hosts and register your server name. Uh, or, or, or your, or your uh, DNS name so that the connectivity is established. Now we can type the commands. Why? Because this prompt indicates that MongoDB is now ready to accept the commands. And show DBs is the command which will show you all the databases that you have. As you can see, I have got a MyDB, ImageDB, MyMongo, XYC, Local, etc. as the databases. And if you want to delete a database, you can just go to the database by typing use XYZ, for example, and then write db.drop database, which is a function. And if everything is okay, you will get a message dropped. And if you type show dbs again, you will not be seeing the XYZ database. Right, now the client is ready. And the server is accepting, accepting all the connections from the client. We are now ready to insert a document into a collection. The best way to do that is using a GUI, GUI. And one of the open source GUIs which is providing you a community based server, community based, sorry, client is Robo3T and the old name of this particular tool was RoboMongo. Recently they changed it to Robo3T and I have 
Robo Mongo installed for you. You can just go to Robo 3T and download this particular tool. So if I am clicking that, uh, let me just show you how this is done. I am just removing this particular uh, connection and I will show you how to create a connection. What you need to do is click on create and then just give a connection as my Mongo, for example, just give some name and you give your host name and the port and for this example, we are using local host and 27017. If you know your virtual machine's IP, you can type that particular IP here and connect to virtual machine's MongoDB, provided you already started the server by typing MongoD on the virtual machine MongoDB instance. I'm not going to that and click on save and then select that and click on connect. So on the left hand side, you will see exactly that you have seen earlier the same databases. For example, if you look here, you can see that there are uh, three databases, ImageDB, MyDB, My, uh, MyMongo, local and system are normally hidden. And as you can see here, uh, ImageDB, MyDB and MyMongo are already available. If you want to see the local, since it is a system based one, you can just click on the system and normally we don't use that system based uh, uh, database. And uh, you have all these databases that are available. This is the place when you can go to the collections and you can look at a collection, for example, and you can see all your commands and this particular place, you can type any MongoDB command and uh, this GUI will help you when you type db dot, for example, it will show you all the options that are available on MongoDB. All right, let me show you how to delete this particular collection. So I can just remove drop database and then click yes. So exactly this is what we have done in the client by typing the command db dot drop database. But GUI will give you a little bit more YZYG approach to do this particular thing. Next step is I'm going to create a new database. And let me call this particular database as sample and click create. As you can see, there is a new database created. And now you can see that there is only the default collection that is available. Let us create a new collection by inserting a document into this. How will you do that? You can just insert something by telling db dot sample dot and so on and so forth. So I'm going to create a new collection and let me call this particular collection as let's say demo and click on create. Right? So demo is created now. So sample is the database and demo is the collection. And as you know, a collection can contain a document. A document will have key and value, which is encapsulated as a JSON document. So click on insert document. Let's remove these two. Why? Because the sample data file that I'm going to give you, that's already containing these braces. So we don't need a duplicate. And then what I suggest you to go to fourhoursun.com slash passion. And if you come down, you will see Shakespeare text.json. Because there is a validation going on in Firefox, I will open the same thing in Safari. And go to the Shakespeare text.json. Yeah, you got this particular file. As you see, the braces are already there. I'm going to select this entire document by
control C and control V on Windows, command C and command V on Mac and then paste that and click on save. And now if you double click, you will see that entire document that you have inserted. If there are any errors, you will get an error message telling that the JSON document is not valid and you may need to correct your JSON document. Right? So, you got a database sample and you have got a collection called a demo within that particular database. The next step is to write MapReduce. MongoDB supports writing a map function and a reduce function. So let me explain you by opening another command prompt. This is just for explanation purpose. You don't have to do this. cd mongo and cd, uh, sorry. And if you look at, there is a file here called robomongo.txt. So, I have a function which is basically the equivalent of a map function that we have written during our Hadoop MapReduce programming. In this, I am just emitting the play name and the line ID. So, this is the key and value that is being emitted by the mapper. If you remember the twinkle twinkle little star map reduce example word count, we were emitting each word comma one. Here we are emitting the play name and the line ID. And just to show you how you can do the reduce is I am taking all the list of this place and this line IDs and for the same play name whatever line IDs are there I am going to add it. And finally I am going to call the MapReduce onto our collection. In this, sample is the name of the collection, but please remember that our collection name is demo. Sample is the database name, so you should not make a mistake. Always the MapReduce should be executed on the collection. So db.demo.mapreduce, you have to write. And the output in MongoDB will be created into a collection. And we can look at the output if it is successfully created. So what I am going to do, I am going to copy this particular code, okay, and you can get the same code by going again back to forowersun.com slash passion and then there is a file called uh, uh, robomongo.txt, this file, this file is containing the code robomongo.txt, okay, this one which is being selected. So you can open that and you can copy this map function. Please don't copy the first three lines which is just a help for you, right? Similarly, the reduce function also. So let us write the map and the reduce onto the RoboMongo screen. So first we will write this and then we are going to execute the map reduce on our collection we have to edit this because the name of the collection in this particular document is sample. We need to change it to demo. So coming back here and then paste that and then change this one to demo. Right? And now you select this and let's execute. Beautiful. And refresh this as you can see here. In this code, we mentioned that the output collection name is passion bytes which will be the result of this map and reduce on your collection so passion bytes is created and if you click you will see the play name and the total of the line numbers now, since the data type is not specified as int it is just showing you as a double data type that's all but basically we executed a map reduce on mongodb Right? The next example is I am going to write a standalone program now to connect to Twitter. And uh, as we mentioned earlier, mt.tar 
is the file that contains this particular code. MT is an abbreviation for Mongo Twitter. And I have that particular code downloaded in my MongoDB directory. So let me just look at that temp and I have got the empty.tar. Okay. So let me start from scratch. I'm going to delete the existing directory and assume that you copied empty.tar into a directory. What you need to do tar xvf empty.tar. And as you can see, automatically it will create a Mongo Twitter directory. Go inside the Mongo Twitter directory and you will see code go inside the code directory and you will see your build.xml, lib and src. Now a little bit of theory. Whenever you want to connect to a social media website, you will be basically using APIs provided by that social media website or that social media organization. For example, Twitter gives you APIs, Facebook gives you APIs, Fitbit gives you APIs. So you can use APIs, standard Java based APIs or any language that is supporting APIs and then call Twitter. For that, you need to get the keys, a consumer key and a consumer token. You can refer to the Google for getting a consumer key and consumer token in Twitter. Basically, you will be going to dev.twitter.com and you should log in with your valid Twitter ID. For example, my Twitter ID is Passion Bytes, and then provide the password. And once you log in, if you look at the applications that are being provided, you will see if you are created an application, that application will have a consumer key and consumer token. This is a consumer key and this is a consumer token, right? So you have got access token, access token secret, secret key and API key. You need these values in order to make sure that you are able to connect to Twitter. So if your organization is having a Twitter page, you should create an app and then get these particular tokens. And then what you need to do is, if you look inside my source, there is a mytwitter.java and inside this code, I have embedded the key and the password. The, the, talk, the talk, token secret, access token secret and access tokens, right? So once you have done this, all you need to do is, you have to run this particular code, but please look in the mytwitter.java uh, that we are connecting to MongoDB using the MongoDB client API to the local host 27017 creating a database called Twitter, get DB will create a database if the database is not existing and already you know that from the RoboMongo screen, I don't have a Twitter database on the left hand side. So if it is not there, it will create the Twitter database. It will collect, it will create a collection called tweets within the Twitter database and then it is going to insert all the tweets that you are getting by using the API. And the API wrapper that I am using for connecting to Twitter is Twitter4j. You can go to Twitter4j, please Google it, and you can see the basic documentation and sample programs there. So, what we need to do is that in the code directory, please remember that the place where the build.xml is there, just write and Twitter. If you write and Twitter, what it will do is it will compile the source code, create the dist directory and will run the code that I have just shown you, my twitter.java, right? And the code internally will insert it into a MongoDB database and will show you the tweets collection. So let's execute. So it is building the jar. 
and it has retrieved 164 tweets and let us go to this particular MongoDB screen and let us do a refresh. Beautiful, you can see here, now the Twitter database is created which internally contains the tweets collections and it should have 164 tweets. And if you look, you will see all the tweets that are being retrieved, which is the latest. Right? In this way, you can connect to any database and you can get the data into MongoDB. Only thing is you need to integrate your Java API based application and the Twitter collection in MongoDB using MongoDB client. In this way, you can schedule at regular intervals and get all the tweets and at the end of the day, you can write a map reduce to do a sentiment analysis. Thus, doing a social media analysis, how different customers have tweeted about your organization or about you. Positive, negative, neutral. And combining with BERT, you can create nice reports. For example, assume that like the last example, we created the output into something like Passion Bytes, which is a result of uh, your MapReduce output. You can easily now connect from BERT to this Passion Bytes database. Sorry, Passion Bytes collection and then retrieve the report. Hope the idea is clear. If there are any questions, please post to Passion Bytes. Thank you very much.